Our Body Game Room is an invitation to regard football as play. It is a way to experience the passion in the way that this sport moves the Brazilian people. Here we have a virtual field, a kick the goal track, a cinema, so everyone can get a taste of the world of football. It is exactly this live experience that women were able to have after the regulation of the sport in 1983. For a while, this room has privileged male teams who participated in the Brazilian National League. But what do we know about women's teams? In the 1980s, women's clubs and championships started trying to move up from amateurism. There was no shortage of demand. There were tons of women wanting to play. They may have only lacked permission and opportunity. The feminist movement was growing, and if there were no places to play, women claimed them, as they have kept on doing until today. Two teams that made history were Radar, from Rio de Janeiro, and Saad, from São Caetano do Sul, a city in São Paulo. The Rio team was created inside one of the oldest men's clubs in the city. The São Paulo team, on the other hand, was formed with the female base of Guarani from the city of Campinas, which ended because of some leaders' bias against the sport. Radar was the first Brazilian team to travel abroad. It even won the club's Mundialito against Bayern Munich. The team had players like Maggie, Belezinha, Fia, and Rata, and never lost the Taça Brasil, the Brazilian Cup. Saad has won the São Paulo Cup six times, the National Cup four times, the club's Mundialito once, and the first Brazil Cup in history. Big names like Marcia Tafarel, Marcia Honorio, Russa, Tânia Maranhão, Maravilha, and Simone Jatobá paraded their talent at Saad. Wow! There are several other clubs that kick-started women's football in becoming more professional and more popular. Many stories have been lost over time, but the Football Museum has been struggling, as have so many other researchers, to recover this past. In Rio, we had the Vasco team, where Marta started, and also Bangu and São José. In São Paulo, there were teams like Panterinhas, Sabesp, Isispop, Guarani, ADPM and Brasinhas. There was a team in Pará named Tuna Luzu and in Bahia, where the Euro Bahia team played. In Amazonas, there was Sul América. Aside from other very traditional clubs that were pioneers, such as Internacional de Porto Alegre, Sporte in Recife, Cruzeiro and Atlético, both from the state of Minas Gerais, and the Paraná Club. Comembol, the organization that runs the South American tournaments, specifies nowadays that the best-known clubs who want to enroll in, in international competitions must have both an under-17 and a main female team. CBF now requires the same at the national tournaments. A pita é Micar Caldeiras! O Corinthians é campeão da Libertadores Feminina de 2019! O Corinthians faz uma campanha espetacular, espetacular, impecável. In 2019, the sportscaster Natalia Lara commented on the victory of the Corinthians team at Copa Libertadores. Corinthians is a club that has recreated its female team at different times over the decades and has been making history in women's football. At this point of the tour, you can already see the participation of women in football is as old as the sport itself. It is older than the Pacaembu Stadium. So join me to the final stage to talk about women on the field here at the Pacaembu Stadium. O seu, o meu, o nosso. Bye.